Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Kristen Cantu. I work at Greenway Institute. I'm a Montpelier resident. And I even live in the neighborhood with my family and our canine companion just a couple of blocks away from where we are right now. So we invited you all here this evening to share an update on campus plans. And like many of you, I'm invested in what happens on this campus. We care about the health of this neighborhood, this community, Montpelier, and your insights. We'll begin this evening with an update from Rebecca Holcomb, one of our co-founders. And we ask that you guys hold any questions, comments, or insights until the end, we promise we'll make time for all of them. I will actually have a microphone that I'll bring to anyone who wants to speak. We'll want to make sure to speak on the mic because Orca is recording, and that way anyone who views this afterwards can hear what you have to say. Um, and if you guys are shy and don't want to be on camera, don't worry, we'll stick around afterwards so you can come up and talk to any one of us after the presentation is over. Um, so please come by and introduce yourselves. Um, I think uh, some of you were at our uh, potluck last fall. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces and to see some new ones here today. Um, so please join me in welcoming Rebecca Holcomb up to speak. Thank you so much for coming. It's nice to see some people came a year ago and we're really proud and excited to be back and giving you an update. Before I start, I'm Rebecca Holcomb. I am thrilled to be here. This is one of the most exciting things I've ever worked on in my life. Um, I care deeply about the state, and it is so nice to be working on something positive and forward-looking that I think will be great for this community, but also great for bringing young people to Montpelier and keeping this campus vital at the heart of Montpelier. I want to start just by calling out a couple people. First of all, Kristen, it is amazing to have Kristen here. She makes this place run. You will run into her in all different kinds of capacities. And you've been invaluable in helping us keep our pulse on what's up in the Montpelier community and helping us you know, be aware of ways that we can help the, Vermont, uh, the Montpelier community as well. We know it's been a really rough year for the town and uh, we've been you know, glad and proud to help play a part in the recovery as well. Um, Hannah Root, next to Kristen has been here. She's also now a Montpelier resident. Um, we brought her here to your community, pretty proud of that, and has been invaluable in both thinking about the design of the educational programs that we've been piloting as we get ready for launch, but has also played a pivotal role in sort of charting the course for the next next couple of years. So grateful to have her, and she'll be around afterwards to talk as well. My deep partner in crime, Troy McBride, um, who is a longtime entrepreneur and, and, and engineer in the context of Vermont, deeply embedded in the sustainability community and solar energy and uh, you know really is the vision for this and when I was trying to figure out what to do Troy said hey what about this and I couldn't help but say this is exactly what Vermont needs and how many people get to work on sustainability and bringing up the next generation so this is it this is where it's at and really excited about this before I start I have to acknowledge Katie Gustafson from the Vermont College of Fine Arts and um, I don't know where we'd be without all the generosity and support that you've given us in the transition. And it's just been wonderful to have such a powerful partner in the VCFA. And um, as we move in and try to continue this, this campus as a living and learning community and maintain that position and that purpose of young life and vitality at the heart of Montpelier, um, we're sorry that we're not going to have you next to us all the time, right in the same building, but we're really excited for your next phase and all the great work that you're continuing to do. And, and we're glad that as we move in, you are moving into another, another way of bringing the same greatness to the work you do. So thank you. And uh, you'll get to this later, but we are really proud that a lot of your team is actually coming on board with us. So continuity isn't just buildings, it's people. And we are really glad to be able to, to build on the incredible team that you, that you developed and uh, look forward to continuing that relationship. So uh, this slide speaks to why we're here. Our mission is to inspire current and future generations to engineer our sustainable future. Vermont needs young people, but it needs young people who can imagine and design the future we all know we need. And we've been living it right here in Montpelier hard the last couple years, and we feel our students are testimony to what we can do. And we're really excited to be able to be here. Um, what our vision is for this vibrant campus that continues at the heart of the Montpelier community. 
in every decision we make about who we partner with now and how we develop our work. It's about how do we continue that mission, that mission of a living learning campus that brings people here to get them ready to do good work in the context of Vermont. And that's, that's really what we're excited to share with you today. You know, when we were thinking about where to go, uh, we spent a lot of time traveling all over, and some of this is a repeat for those who came last year. And we fixed in on Montpelier for so many reasons, and we feel so privileged to be able to have be in this space. Um, first of all, being in Montpelier lets us build on Vermont's green energy and green technology potential. And if you follow this sector, you know that tourism won't pay all the bills. What's unique about our green energy and our green technology sector is it's one of our highest demand, highest growth sector, and it also is high wage. And when you bring in engineers, you bring in opportunity, not just for yourself, but other people all around you. And this is an opportunity for us to be part of creating that bright, bright future for Vermont. It's also a chance to bring young people and entrepreneurship to our state capital. That's what these buildings have done for years, and that's what we want to keep them doing. And we know how hard it's been. When no state agencies have gone remote, there are not always enough people downtown. Our vision is to bring life here in a way that helps bring life back to Montpelier. And we want to support Montpelier, which is on track to be the first net zero capital by 2030. That makes us a good partner at the right time for a city that is doing the work that we need to do to be who we need to be in the next century. And we want to continue to use this campus to advance higher education. And we're working on a model that is a higher education model for the future, that is forward looking, and that we think will bring new opportunity to Montpelier. Why Montpelier? It's a natural college town. It's a great community, and you're lucky to be here. It's the capital city. It's a great, strong community. All you had to do was go downtown on, on July 3rd, and you could see, the, see what it's like to be here. It's a desirable location. People want to live here. Um, it's also a hub. It's the political hub. It's a unique opportunity for students to understand how policy decisions are made and how that can, can help or hinder some of the work that they're trying to do. It's a commercial hub. There's something going on. Young people want to see young people. They want to be able to go to a movie. They want to have an event. And that's what you bring and you offer. It's also a place where there's other educational institutions that we can have some kind of symbiotic relationship. And you can walk to it all. Vermont is scaled in a way that is superhuman, and we really value that. And of course, you're the best northeastern small town. Need we say more? Um, Vermont is also a natural sustainability hub. This is our brand, and it's our opportunity. We are a leader in per capita employment in renewables and sustainable businesses. We're jumping into a moving river. We're not trying to turn the tide. This is a great place to do this work right now. And we're going to help put Montpelier on the map, and we're going to help put Vermont on the map. Vermont employers are hungry for engineers who can contribute to our expanding green energy and green technology industries. When we did a pilot semester last fall, what we heard over and over again from employers is that to really grow and make Vermont thrive, they need to know we're bringing up the next generation of talent to do that work. And there are people doing great work in the state, there's not enough of it, and we're going to be part of that process. This is also a unique opportunity to leverage Vermont's green brand. When people think of Vermont, they think of green, they think of sustainability. But to do it in a way that drives economic development here and develops and attracts new talent. We need young people. One of the things I'm really excited about, small group, but half of our interns are now working in Vermont this summer. If we can continue to turn young people on to Vermont, to help see them, them see this as a great place to work and live, we can be part of bringing young people back to our communities and driving that bright future for the state. And just to get a sense of what some of our young people did, Hannah back there, I introduced you, she organized and led something called the Friday Career Tracks. And every Friday, our students went out and visited different businesses all around the state to learn how the hands-on work that they were doing in the classroom that deep learning, how it related to the kinds of problems that industry and businesses across the state were trying to solve. And one of the best parts about it was watching our young people come in tentative at the beginning of the semester. And Hannah and I were talking about how by the end of the semester, having spent the whole semester meeting with and talking with engineers in all these businesses, how they sort of swaggered out at the end, uh, feeling like they were engineers themselves. That's the kind of sense of mastery and competence, but deep connection to Vermont 
that we hope will both help them be skilled, but also help them decide that this is the place that they want to be um, when they grow up. Um, so what's been going on on campus? Some of this you may know before, and some of you know because you came and visited us at our potluck, and we were really proud to be able to share our students with you and have dinner with you, and also have you look at some of the work they did. Last fall, we piloted a hands-on project-based sustainability semester. It was an on-campus beta test of the educational model that we're doing. And uh, we are planning another model for this, the uh, spring of 2025, 20, uh, which will be a work embedded sustainability semester, really looking at work-based learning in Vermont business and industries, where we're gonna place students there and then supervise some of their, their learning, an expanded co-op sort of model from the outside. Um, again, how do we build that sense of competence and power in young people, but also get them deeply connected to Vermont and to Vermont businesses? Another thing you'll see actually this month is um, you know, another way we're embracing this idea of a living learning community in the heart of Vermont is we'll be hosting the Governor's Institute of Vermont. Um, they're going to have a global issues and youth action course here on campus, so you may see a bunch of high school students running around in the next, next month. Again, how do we take these buildings? It's, we don't want them empty. We want them to be vibrant buildings where young people are coming to learn and are finding ways to engage with your community in Vermont in a way we hope keeps them deeply connected. And you'll also see in glimmers, uh, as we do things, um, continued work over the next couple of years towards our development of a novel Greenway engineering program, which we hope will be a more expanded uh, program. And that, that work is going to continue to develop over the next couple of years. And you'll see more people coming on board as soon as uh, uh, September to start doing some of that work. And we'll hope to have you back to meet them. So. What's going on? One of the things we wanted to do was take this opportunity uh, to tell you where we are in the work of the campus. And I, you know, change is really hard. And I know when, um, when any time there's a transition, people kind of not want to know what's happening in their neighborhood. We are thrilled because what we are really seeing is this ability to take this campus and make sure that we're continuing that mission of living and learning here. Um, when we met, you may recognize this map if you were here the last time we met. Um, what we've done is made some progress. When we came before, some of the buildings in yellow and red were under contract, but the contracts weren't complete. Um, now, if you look at the yellow, this building and the building next to it over there are currently occupied by Greenway Institute. And the Schulmeyer and buildings, the other at the bottom, those are also owned by Greenway and they're under contract that those purchases are complete. The buildings next door here, the red buildings, those belonged in the map, those belong to the new school. And they've purchased those buildings and that purchase is also complete. That's not the whole campus, so we're gonna talk about what is now under contract that we couldn't talk about because it wasn't done the last time we met with you. In the magenta, and uh, we thank you for putting up a bright color so we could see it, it's the Montpelier, I'm gonna say this wrong, Performing Arts hub. hub. It's a hub. <laughs> that is super exciting for us because as an engineering program, we're deeply uh, tied to design in the arts, and it's just really nice to have an arts hub right next door. That is under contract, and we're looking forward to see how that work develops. Also under contract, and the subject of, of today, are the Dewey Building up on the other side, directly across the green, and College Hall, the middle building, which is um, currently where the Vermont College of Fine Arts uh, offices are. Those are under contract with Greenway. So we are in the process of purchasing, purchasing those from the Vermont College of Fine Arts. This is the buildings. Now, one of the funny things about this campus, and one of the reasons it's taking a little time, is the land doesn't always go with the buildings in a clean cut way. So the next slide, this is buildings, and this shows you who's gonna be in each of these buildings. And this is about the property that sits under the buildings. And under contract, or the purpose, the purchase complete is everything in the bright yellow or in the bright red. And the red, you'll see, is going to in, in, involve the hub, the new school, and Greenway. That is condominium property. So we share that. There's some shared mechanicals, and that's a shared, shared resource. So there's some shared condominium property responsibilities there. The yellow is entirely Greenway, and the stuff that is orange 
is under contract with Green Bay, but the purchase is not complete. So that orangey color will eventually become yellow on this map. And that includes the buildings all around the green that aren't in the red, but also the property behind this building here. The big picture, when you look at this, is continuity of use. And that's what's exciting to us. We are going to continue to use this as a living and learning campus. The buildings and the land use will be largely the same as under VCFA. We're going to be able to continue many of the policies that have been placed under the Vermont College of Fine Arts. And as I said earlier, we're thrilled that the amazing team that Katie and others have put together at the Vermont College of Fine Arts, that building and grounds team, is going to become the Greenway building and grounds team. So that allows us to continue the maintenance of these facilities much as they were before. And over time, we'll phase in increases in our students over the next decade. So you'll slowly see some of those numbers come up. BCFA was low residency, but we're hoping to get back towards what this was when it was a full academic facility. Glover and Dewey will house the, um, the Governor's Institute students and staff this month from the 9th to the 20th. That's this building and the building across, I mean the building next door and the building across the way. So you may see some high school students running around. They're all students who are committed to Vermont. They're there for the summer to learn about public policy and governance. And be sure to introduce yourselves uh, to them if you see them around. Um, and then Dewey, we're also looking in, in contract and negotiations with two organizations who also have a living and learning uh, focus and mission and we're hoping to be able to talk to you more about that in the summer later in the summer or in the fall when those details are finalized again what's exciting is we are thrilled that this will be a learning hub for the community and we're thrilled that we're bringing more young people into the heart of montpelier who hopefully can be part of the community and bring energy uh, to the town um, one little issue um, that might be worth understanding is there is a property subdivision. If you recall, the areas that are outlined here are all being uh, purchased by Greenway. We are actually subdividing it simply to facilitate the purpose. Our mission is to continue the use, and the blue area is recreational. Getting financing for a recreational facility is a little bit different than getting it for the academic institutions. We are going to flat out buy the yellow area, and we are grateful to the Vermont Co College of Fine Arts for helping us with some of the financing and the transition on the recreational green. The great news is this allows us to buy the whole purpose, to buy it relatively quickly, but also to maintain the current use as we move forward. So we're trying to make this as seamless as possible, and we're really, really grateful to the Vermont College of Fine Arts for being flexible to help us with that. So that's the bullet tour. You have the whole, or not the whole team, but a lot of the team here, and uh, Katie Gustafson. But what we'd love to do is just take time, and if you have questions, we hope you'll let us know if there are things that you'd like us to know about this transition. Please do that and also just tell us what brought you here today and, and what your hopes are. So we'd love to turn it back to you all. Hi. I got the microphone. <laughs> so um, I was wondering if you could go back a slide. I'm a little confused on the uh, land ownership. Yep. Um, so it looks like you're going to own the green straight out. Yeah. And then you're owning the land under College Hall, but the uh, VCFA is owning the building. Is that right? No. OK. Um, no, uh, so I may not have explained that well. Because you're subdividing it. This, this this is land yeah. um, so this building is what's happening to the land under the buildings the this this slide is the building so this refers to bricks and mortar right i understand that vcfa is owning the building they're selling so everything oh they're on, selling the yeah, building orange the orange vcfa that's news is selling it college hall will belong to greenway they are selling it to oh us. okay you sort of Okay. Do you want me to run I through this again? That. I can run through it again. No, I think yeah. I was pretty good on it. I mean, the, the headline was sort of buried that um, VCFA is selling College Hall. Yes. Right? They're sell the VCFA is selling in the next round of purchases. They are selling College Hall and Dewey 
to Greenway. So Greenway got Institute it. is buying that to continue its use as a living learning institute. Okay, got it. Yep. And then the only condominiumized land is this strip over on this side, the, the red. The red, correct. And then you're going to own the land outright behind the red. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then you own the other two buildings outright. So the also. only of the campus, the only part that won't be entirely owned by Greenway is the condominiumized part, the red. Got and it. That, and we own that in conjunction, that property, with the other partners on the okay. property. Okay. At, at one point, we were told that a much larger portion of the campus was going to be condominiumized. Uh, including the uh, the green was going to be owned by everybody, but that's fine. I mean, right. I'm just um, well, the, tr the, trying to catch up to right. what had been right. told to the community earlier on. So I th and so this this effectively what you see here, yep. this is all being sold to Greenway. The reason it's being subdivided is to facilitate the sale Financing. and to make it easier to maintain the recreational purpose. Got it. Of it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. We, we understand what a powerful asset that is for the community and the health. Mm -hmm. well, while we're still on the land, can, is it okay for me to come and point? Absolutely. I need one of those pointers that we use for a cat. <laughs> so, who owns this strip of Ridge Street? That will be... I have an obvious reason for asking that question. Greenway owns... I'm going to go back the to the... The canyons in that street. Oh. I, I don't know if it belongs to the city. It oh, used to be... Oh, that's a different question. I'm going yeah. to turn that one over to Katie. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the land. But I understand no, no, the canyons. The street. You want to know who owns the canyons. Yes. VCFA owns the street. It's That's a... a private way that's not a public road and yeah, that happened a number of years ago i mean it used to be a city street well as long a as long it, long time ago uh, as long as i've been at vcfa it's been a vcfa road i wish it was a public and it was road. closed off for a while it what vcfa did close it off for yeah. a while but we opened it up so we own it right now, and eventually when these transactions go through, uh, Greenway will own that part of the property. Would somebody be willing to commit to doing something about the gigantic oh. Well, so where the craters are, that's actually the city of Montpelier. You you can see on my survey a like carve out. Ooh. And so I would love to commit the city of Montpelier, but they are also busy and very cash strapped too so i it's a big hole yes it is i agree with you so what i've heard that is that what you would like us to know is that there's a canyon and that you're hoping somebody can address it's a big it. hole okay well there are a number <laughs> of holes but one of them is you know it's big around um and i i do have another question and it's about curriculum can you tell us anything about proposed curriculum um are you granting a degree? If so, at what level? Um, I mean, undergraduate, graduate, what? Uh, some idea of what kind of um, topics you might have in mind, that sort it of thing. It will be an under, undergraduate program in sustainable engineering that leads to a BS in engineering. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Hi, could you go, I'm Phyllis Rubenstein. I live on 15 College Street. Yeah. And thank you very much for your informative presentation. Um, can you tell us what is this the slide you want? Is is this the right slide? Is this the yes, one you it want? Is. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, my understanding is that you're in the process of purchasing parcels G and H. Is that correct? The, the land. The, this yes, these two parcels, both of the parcels in the in the in that block. What we're showing in this slide, Greenway is buying all of this. Right. Oh, oh these oh these slides. Uh, no, oh, yes. what. But that's fine because my question is, what is the plan for G and for the land Sorry. on G and H? G and H is the one. Yeah, on the far right, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the far right. Just, to, just so everyone else knows, this is parcel G and H. Right. Troy, I don't know if you want to speak to. I don't know that we have fully developed plans for that. Yeah. Uh, we have no change in operation <laughs> or the people that mow it. <laughs> Hey, 
having uh, started a program in College Hall about 35 or so years ago, um, I understand the difficulty of standing up something mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. And so a couple of questions was partially answered. What's the degree? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be accredited? Mm -hmm. Is it, what's the endowment mm -hmm. to run the thing? Are you guys going to be tuition driven? And are, what's the plan for accreditation or is there a plan for accreditation? Well, um, so I don't want to get ahead of us because we actually are hoping to, we'll, we'll do another presentation that focuses on the academic program. We have been working hard. I mean, when you think a lot about, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but it will have to be accredited because you have to be accredited in the state of Vermont to continue to operate a college degree granting program. Um, there is a time, you have a number of years to do so, and we will go through that application and approval process with the state of Vermont. Currently, we're operating in partnership with an accredited institution in Pennsylvania, and we're operating under their, their accreditation while we do a series of beta tests to both pilot and develop some of the different practices. And Elizabethtown College in Pennsylvania. It's a small liberal arts college with a very well-respected engineering program. Part of their interest in us is they can't uh, accommodate all their students and they're looking to us to help them innovate and rethink some of their design elements as well. So we've been partnering with them in the transition, but we're really looking forward and hearing about the need for a, a broader, bigger program. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back hopefully in September and have some, we have some exciting news that we'll be ready to share at that point as well. Yeah. Hi, uh, Lisa Dworsky here from First mm -hmm. Avenue. Um, thanks for the presentation. I think I, I felt like I have missed some big news in your introduction, and I just might not have been reading the local paper on that day. But um, so is VCFA moving away from the campus entirely? No. No. OK. The ownership of the building is changing. We will own it and be responsible for the maintenance, but they're becoming a tenant. Is that a fair way to put it? Is that, and Katie, <laughs> yeah. are you still gonna be with VCFA? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, the so, other thing. So what part of VCFA is here? Oh, sir, can you speak in the I'm sorry. So what part of VCFA is here? I'm gonna turn All that. All the students are in Colorado now, right? I'm gonna turn that over to VCFA to answer. So VCFA's administrative offices will remain here in College Hall, and as Rebecca said, we will be become tenants um, of Greenways. Um, and this summer, in fact, people have started headed to Colorado right now. Um, we'll run our summer residency, but after that, we'll be out in CalArts. CalArts is who we are partnering with long term, and that's where our summer and winter residencies will be um, from here on out. So my follow-up question was, um, will there be further meetings or ways that you will communicate with neighbors? Because I would love to have a mm -hmm. further dialogue as you develop more specific plans for Dewey. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like something might be happening this fall where it's occupied, which is great. I mean, mm -hmm. I love the idea that the building isn't sitting empty, but I would just invite a continued communication with the neighbors about who's there. Uh, absolutely. And, and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know who said that, but I absolutely. Um, I, I, both I, of us. Okay. Oh, you're behind, Alyssa. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. That's Abs absolutely. I mean, I think we're already planning on another meeting in September, early September, and uh, end of August. And I think as we make this transition, I know I'm committed, and I think Troy is as well. I think more communication is always better because yeah, yeah. it helps make make sure that um, that as we develop. Um, you know, we're doing so cognizant of the needs of the community as well. We want to be a good member of the community. And so those, those will be happening as well. What we are committing to is maintaining the existing purpose and use mm -hmm. and to trying to do so in a way that is as seamless and continuous as possible. 
everything that's done, part of the reason it took a long time was to figure out how to put this together in a way that, for example, preserve the recreational uses of the green. Um, because it's, it's, you know, we know how important that is and how do we do that and how do we finance that in a way that makes this a seamless transition in the same way as we bring in a partner to, to bring those buildings alive, how do we do that in a way that it continues to be part of the community and not an imposition on the community? And we'll just keep having those conversations. A very practical mundane question, but mm -hmm. since you're gonna be taking over maintenance, mm -hmm. I know as a neighbor, and this may be true for other immediately mm -hmm. joining neighbors, small but rather important continuing things that have never been a particularly big issue is like mm -hmm. the maintenance of our hedge, which is technically mm -hmm. will be on your land. And who do I call when mm -hmm. I, which I usually call every two or three years and say, it's time to lop off the top of the hedge before mm -hmm. it gets too tall. Like who's the contact? You see that, that person right there, Kristen Contu. And if you're on our mailing list, if you reply all to the mailing list, if you don't, if you can't remember her name, Contu, C-A-N-T-U at GreenwayInstitute.org. Can you say that a little more? Kristen. Contu, C-A-N-T-U. But if you, are, I, I'm pretty sure you're on the mailing list for Greenway. Do you get the emails I from did us? not get, oddly enough, okay. or see the announcement for this meeting, but through other neighbors. Okay. Even though I've tried to get on the if, list a few times. Okay, so we need, maybe check, no. let's try putting you on again. But okay. if you reply to the Greenway email, mm -hmm. Kristen will get it as well. Excellent. So make sure you reply that, or you can find, if you just look us up on the website, you'll be able to find her email as well. And those are things, reach us out. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I mean, even with my own house, I don't even know everything that's going on. So reach out. If there's something that you think needs attention, let us know. And uh, you know, we're still learning the space and the buildings and they aren't ours yet, but we're, we're working on getting there. Yeah. Great. Hi, my name's Phil Dodd. Um, one question is how, what's the time frame for purchasing College Hall and Dewey? Do we know, or do you know? Do you want to? That's later this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. late sometime this year. Yeah, late um, this year. That's correct. I was a couple other questions. One about College Hall. What are your plans, short term or long term, for that building? Do you expect, I guess, in the short term, to have tenants like PCFA mm -hmm. and Senator Welch? Mm -hmm. So it'll be kind of we're an continuing space. those. All the all the uses are continuing right okay. now. Okay. Is there still room for rent there? Yes. Still room there. Yes. Um, and the, the last question is about the the green. You said that's going to be a separate parcel. You call it the recreation parcel, and it sounds like you intend to keep the same use there. Mm -hmm. I think I heard at an earlier meeting that the condominium actually has a recreational easement on mm -hmm. the green. Mm -hmm. So between that and what you're telling us, it sounds like uh, we can expect that it will remain as it is for the most Continu part. Continuity. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Hello, Danny Sagan. I live with Elisa at 31 First Avenue, downwind of Dewey Hall. Something that I would like to not see continuity is the heating plant in Dewey mm -hmm. Hall. Well, you are talking to the right people. Because no, I thought it would be a good <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. project for students to figure out how to heat the hot water. I and, think there's a lot, I mean, I think this campus needs to go through what a lot of us are trying to go through at home, which is rethinking how do we become net zero as a campus as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, but if so the students that, would like to do a case study of the air quality of 200 feet from their building. There is no one more invested thing. in addressing that than the guy sitting right behind you. Okay. Troy. All right, good, <laughs> yeah, I'll talk is, to this Troy. This is what he does for a living. And, and, um, and we are thrilled to address that. And I, I mean, part of the plan, it, you know, Vermont, Montpelier is gonna be net zero. We're gonna be part of that. And so our commitment is to make this a, a sustainable green campus Delighted as well. Delighted to hear it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, we're not gonna do it overnight, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, we but can. that is truly a goal, is to do some of that work here and have our students use the building as a laboratory. And that's not the only place that we need to do that work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How tempting is it? Uh, it's Labarth again. I live right behind Dewey Hall. Um, how tempting is it to plant some solar panels, I don't know, on the green or in GH or? That's not the plan. Just, you know, <laughs> um, it's yeah. just, you know, pie in the sky kind um, of question. I'll, I'll let somebody who's done quite a bit of thinking about this answer that question. Troy. Uh, we are looking at 
the rooftops as a first opportunity yeah. to do some solar, especially the ones that are south facing. Any, so, any plans of having a, a, a cooperative community buy-in type situation with regard to that? It's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, put that put that in your hat. Okay, thank yeah. you. Because yeah. some of us, because of the old trees, some of us don't have, can't get above seventy percent efficiency on our roofs. Troy is very good at using built space for this. Yep. It's not clear to me who the um, other than the hub. Yep that is under, con well, wants to be under contract or is. I know that there's a physical therapist in a building and I, I don't know if he owns the building. And who are the other condominium owners? Oh, uh, there's, okay, I'll let you address that, but there's, or Troy can do it. Yeah, they're separate. Uh, so there are two health and wellness centers. Uh, the one Troy is pointing at right now, that's uh, VTPT, Vermont uh, Physical Therapy. Um, and they're up and fully operational right now. And then the other um, was purchased by the Ice Cube LLC, and that will also eventually be um, health and wellness um, providers. And those are all part of that condominium? Yes. So that, again, this is the buildings that are currently under contract or complete, and this is the total condominium, and it comes all the way down inside that red box. It's a, it's a little funky, the way it works, yeah. Hi, this is Elvira from 29 Ridge Street. It's nice to see uh, activity on the loading docks again at Dewey Hall as you prepare for Governor's Institute, which sounds like a wonderful initiative. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you for the privilege of being in the room here and acknowledge that you're talking about privately held institutions. You actually have no obligation to inform us about any of this activity at all. So I just wanted to thank you and offer my gratitude to you and also to Katie and um, the college for continuing to provide us with, with updates through other means than the standard, you know, design review and board meeting notes and that sort of thing. So just thank you. Well, thank you for that. And, uh, well, go ahead. Well, and, I was, and, and, and we hope you'll come back. I mean, I think our hope is we, we were thrilled to have a uh, potluck and we're looking forward to have other events. And we have some good news coming that we look forward to sharing as well later in the summer. Katie, um, did you I want just wanted to take that opportunity as a segue um, that we are going to be uh, submitting a, an application to the DRB for that subdivision. And that was part of our hope tonight mm -hmm. was to be able to be in the room with neighbors, the people most directly impacted by that application in advance um, of that. So many of you will be getting notices for that mm -hmm. subdivision application. And hopefully we've answered um, some of your questions tonight, maybe address some of the concerns, but don't hesitate um, between now and then to reach out to any of us if you have follow-up questions about that process or to attend um, the DRB meeting, DRB meeting, which I think is in August sometime. I don't, I don't know exactly when. And, and again, just to be clear, this, this shows where the subdivision is but it's this entire orange block in the middle. And part of the subdivision is because of the way the financing is working. You may have already said this. I'm Fran Dodd. <clears throat> the, um, the one to the left of College Hall named, is that Dewey? Dewey, yes. Um, you may have listed what your expectation is about that, and maybe you can't say yet, but I, I thought I heard that there might be housing in there. You might be developing housing in there. What are your plans we're, for that or your vision? We, it that? isn't finalized, but we're talking to a couple organizations, and everybody has a living and learning, like a learning academic component. And so we're trying to keep consistent with the continuity of use as this, of this as a hub for learning and living. People come here to learn. So there will be some learning component to anyone who's there. That's what these buildings were designed for, so it's what the physical design lends itself to.
Yeah. In the back. <laughs> No, I have a good voice. I don't need a microphone. In fact, at the outset, I had great difficulty in hearing what you were saying I'm because so the acoustics in this room are terrible. Yeah. But without the microphone, I have one question. What is uh, equitable engineering? I've never heard the term before. What is that? Um, so I, th I think part of when we think about I mean, one of the things that people may not know is that in engineering, there's tremendous attrition. I mean, a lot of engineering programs have, have uh, lose the majority or half the students before only, I mean, Danny, you probably have these statistics too. I think only 30% graduate in four years and they lose, you know, another, uh, or they gain a couple more two years after. The way we teach engineering isn't working for too many students. It's too expensive. It's too disconnected from the work that they have to do, and they can't afford it because they graduate in debt. And it's a lot of um, sit in class and lecture in some places, um, and then I promise you, you'll be building things in four years when you get out. So the way we're trying to design this program is to make it accessible, to do it in a way that we're gonna break even as a business model, but students will be able to graduate without debt, and we will be able to engage them in the work of engineering hands-on in a way that is supportive of learning. So when we were testing our model this fall, we were looking at ways to provide intensive support in a mastery-based environment in ways that help students who you know, might not have been as confident in the classroom develop a real sense of confidence about their learning and develop a very strong engineering identity that made them feel very confident about their choice in pursuing an engineering degree. So by making it equitable, we're saying we're trying to design an engineering education program that you don't have to gut it out and endure in order to graduate with an engineering degree because we engage you and support you, provide mentoring all along the way and help you build a network with engineers so that you can graduate, work ready to go out into the field and become an engineer in our communities. So we're trying to build on the research around engineering education and what kinds of supports and what kind of teaching make it more likely that students succeed and thrive in engineering. So that's it. And, and, you know, I think a lot of, uh, you know, students have been pretty clear about what works and doesn't work. There's a tremendous amount of research on this right now, and we're trying to bring that into the classroom. I mean, again, if this was a business and we lost, you know, 30 to 50 percent of our product, people would think that was a failure. If we're not able to graduate, and we know from the data that the people who leave engineering are equally skilled and competent as the students who persist, but if we, we, we have to ask, are we teaching them the right way if they're all choosing to opt out on engineering? And we need them to graduate. We need those young people here to, to build dams that don't break, to redesign a future that's sustainable, that's gonna be powered by green energy in a way that brings prosperity to Vermont. So we're trying to make engineering accessible to more students in a way that supports them to graduation. I was wondering, Rebecca, if you could talk about the fall, will mm -hmm. there be any students? I mean, I, I realize there might be people in Dewey that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in development. I, I, you mentioned spring of 2025, a different kind of pilot program. Right. Um, will the students be living on campus then? And are you continuing the pilot that you had already done last fall, this fall? Or will there be no students in that um, program on campus in the fall? Right now, we're mostly focused on uh, developing the model and doing significant fundraising to support the model. And so we are using those, those semesters to really prototype and test, and then we are going to be going out and doing significant fundraising to, to bring it to reality. We'll also begin recruiting. It's a two-year recruitment cycle to get a first year of students. Okay, uh, so students. it's another year in fall 2026 mm -hmm. when you're hoping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to kind of be rolling mm -hmm. after the fundraising yeah. piloting phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Mm -hmm. But again, in the interim, I mean, think having Governor's Institute here, having some of these others, we've had other people reach out about opportunities to use this. I think the proximity to the capital is very interesting to a lot of people as well. So 
we're open to living learning uses um, in the interim while we grow. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the fundraising part and how you're affording all this? Um, we are currently matched. We have um, some private philanthropic and some um, some money from the National Science Foundation that have supported us so far, and we're continuing to fundraise. And I think we'll have more to say about that later in the fall. We ended up having four full-time students. It was, um, we advertised late, and what we our takeaway is how long it takes when you don't have any, when you're brand new, to get on people's radars. Um, we are beginning recruitment earlier for the spring, but we actually still want a small cohort because it's a beta cohort, and we're not fully operational yet. Um, what we're going to do is then focus on recruitment for a first cohort of students, and, and we're realizing, again, that's a two-year recruitment cycle. I think I absolutely, and that's part of why. I mean, I think we're confident we have existing tenants in a lot of the buildings that are paying for the facilities and the ongoing operations. And um, you know, it, you know, I think that that's actually part of how we're how we're doing it. And you know, certainly having the Governor's Institute opening it up and making it alive for some of those activities helps us grow slowly and grow intentionally. And part of the challenge that we, you know, there are also you know, understanding the regulatory process and figuring out how to make sure we do the program development and accreditation process the right way. We would rather do it right than too fast. And so that's a piece of it as well. Thank you. I, uh, John Snell, First Avenue. And I spent 30 years in a career working with engineers all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I can think of few things that would be more valuable to almost all of them than this program. And mm -hmm. I really acknowledge you for having that vision. And I just wish that I you know, could have had those guys mm -hmm. in this program mm -hmm. because uh, they were disconnected from reality way mm -hmm. too often. Yeah. I really appreciate your saying that. And I think one of the things that's kept us going is that when we have spoken with business and industry partners and potential donors, they say the same thing. They say this is the program that we need. A lot of engineering programs are teaching for the 1950s. Sustainability has to be how you do it, not an afterthought. And working in a hands-on way, preparing people to be job ready day one, that's critical to young people. They can't afford to, to, to fool around. And so we're, we're really buoyed by that. That's making us feel confident that we've got the right direction. We think we finally have the right business model, and we're looking forward to, to bringing it to life. And uh, we, need, we need change. The, the world has changed around us. You don't need to think farther than Montpelier and downtown to understand why we need to do this work. Yeah. I don't want to keep you here all night. There's more cookies and more Arnold Palmer stuff in the back. Um, we hope you'll come back. We will be having another event later in the summer, and we look forward to seeing you all again and keeping this conversation. You can, if you haven't signed up for the email, there's a paper over there. If you put your name on that, we'll put you on our email list. If you get that email and you have questions, just reply to it and Kristen will get it. And she'll connect to whoever needs to answer your question. Um, and let us know if it's the bushes, a question, uh, something you have on your mind that you're worried about, let us know because it, it makes us better and we really value our relationship with you. And we're really committed to being good members of your community as well. Would you put the map back up while we mingle? Uh, yes, this map or the oh, property yeah, map. Okay, I'll put this back up and if you want to shift, we can shift to one of the other ones as well. Thank you so much for coming today and we look forward to seeing you again. Take care. <laughs>